Hello. Today I will show you how to warp perspective using OpenCV. First, we go through basic steps, just to understand fundamentals. And after that, we will add more code to automate most of the processes. We have a photo of a document. Our task is to find corner points of the document and to tell which point needs to be converted to which point to run the perspective transformation. Let's start by importing CV2 and NumPy as NP. Next, let's open our image. For that let's create an image variable and assign it to cv2.imread. In brackets write image destination and image name with extension. In the project directory, I created an input folder to store the images. I also created the output folder for output images if we want to save the images. Our first line just reads the image, we need the second one to open it. Let's write cv2.imshow and in brackets, we write window name and image input. We also need to add one more line, cv2 wait key and in brackets 0 to keep the image window open. 0 means the delay in milliseconds. Let's run the code and see the image. We have a picture of our document. For learning purposes this image was scaled to be very small, just 360 pixels wide and 450 pixels tall. Next, we need to get our document corners coordinates. For that, we can use paint. Let's open a picture of our document. If you move the cursor over the image you can see how coordinates changes in the bottom left corner. Let's get coordinates for all document corners. Top left is 83 and 18 pixels, top right, 342 and 53, bottom left, 14 and 389, bottom right, 295 and 436. Let's move back to the code and create a new variable to store the coordinates. Let's name it input points and make it equal to np.float32. And in brackets, we add a list with coordinates in lists. Next, we need to define what size our output image will be. Let's have a width equal to 400. And height we calculate to ensure the same aspect ratio as A4 size paper. Next, we need to write the coordinates of the desired output image. For that, we create a converted points variable and make it equal to np.float32. And in brackets, we add a list with coordinates in lists. What's left is perspective transformation. It has two steps. First, we get a matrix that will convert points coordinates to desired coordinates. And after that we use this matrix to convert the image. So, let's create a matrix variable. Make it equal to cv2.getPerspectiveTransform and in brackets, we add input points and the converted points. Next, we create the image output variable and make it equal to the cv2.warpPerspective and in brackets, we define the image we want to warp, the transformation matrix, and the dimensions of the new image. What's left is to show a new warped image. Let's create a new imshow method with the window's name warped perspective and the image source, image output. Let's run the code and see the result. We have two windows, one with the original image and the other is a warped perspective. What else we can add is a code line to save the resulting image. To summarize warped perspective is a three-step process. First, we need to get document corners coordinates. Second, to define desired coordinates of warp document corners. And third, to implement perspective transformation. As you can see only the third step is automatic. Let's try to automate remaining two steps as much as possible. Next, we implement contour detection to detect automatically the corners of our document. We will continue working on the same code. The perspective transformation part will stay the same. We need to delete the lines we won't use and comment the lines, which we will update later. Contour detection has multiple steps. First, we need to modify the image to see possible contours. Second, we need to detect contours. Third, we need to find the right contour which is our document's boundaries. And fourth, we need to determine which coordinates represent which document's corner. We will start with the modification of our image to see some contours. So let's create an original image copy. Next, we will convert our image to gray color space, cv2.cvt color and in brackets, we add the image in cv2.color bgr2 gray. It will convert the current image color space to gray space. Next, we will use bilateral filtering. It's highly effective in noise removal while keeping edges sharp. This is what we exactly need. We need to define the image. It will be a gray image. Diameter of each pixel neighborhood that is used during filtering, let's add 20. Sigma color and sigma space. Let's make it the same, 30. Next, we can search for edges. For that, we will use the canny function. Here we define the image in first and second threshold for the hysteresis procedure. Let's add two more lines to show gray and edged images. This is what it looks like. 
don't worry if the image quality is worse than it was, we modify the image just to find contours. We can see that we have a contour of our document, so we can move to the next step. Also, I should warn you that current parameters for bilateral filter and canny functions not necessarily will work for your input image. So most likely you will need to find new good parameters for every image you will use. You saw that we had three separate windows with our images. And we need to move everyone separately. It's not very convenient. Let's stack these images horizontally and show them in one window. It's quite easy to do, but there is a requirement that we can stack images only with the same shape. So let's check the shapes. It's very easy to do we print image.shape. We repeat for all images. Let's run the code. Okay, we see that gray and edged images have only one channel. We solve this problem by adding this line. The same we do for both images. Let's check the shapes now. Now they have the same shapes. We can stack images. First, let's delete print statements and move modifications before imsho lines. Now we can stack images horizontally with this line, np.h stack and in brackets, we add image names to stack in one bracket. What's left is to show this new image and delete the old imsho lines. We also can delete these empty lines. Let's run the code. We have one window with all our images that we can easily move around. It's time for contour detection. There are three arguments in the find contours function. The first one is the source image, the second is the contour retrieval mode, and the third is the contour approximation method. And it outputs the contours and hierarchy. Contours is a list of all the contours in the image. But we want just one, the biggest contour. For that, we can add another line where we will sort all contours by size and select only the biggest using list slicing. We can loop through all contours and draw them on our input image. For i in contour cv2 draw contours and in brackets we add image, contour, index of contours, minus 1 draws all contours, contour color, and line thickness. For now, we will see just one contour, because we list sliced in contours list. What's left is to add this image to our h stack. Let's run the code. Perfect. Let's see more contours it found in the document. In reality, we could have a bigger contour that isn't our document or it can have more than four corners if, for example, we have a bunch of papers on the table. Let's improve contour detection. Let's search for the biggest contour, which has four corners. For that, we will create the biggest contour function. And we draw just that one contour. Let's move to the top of the code and create the biggest contour function. Let's add an empty numpy array to store our contour and max area variable, which will have the starting value of 0. Next, we loop through all found contours, we limited their number to 10, and calculate the contour area. An area equal to cv2.contour area and in brackets, we add contour i. After that, we can filter out small contours by area. Next, we search for contours with only 4 corners. For that, we need to calculate contour perimeter, Puri equal to cv2 dot arc length and in brackets, we define the curve and if the shape is closed. Next, we approximate our contour to another shape, approx equal to cv2 dot approx poly dp and in brackets we define the curve, approximation accuracy, and if the curve is closed. With if statement we search for a max area and make sure that contour is only with four corners. We add the biggest contour and max area to our variables. We finish by returning the biggest contour. Let's run the code and see the result. It's good. We come to the last part. We have a contour, but we don't know which corner is which. First, let's reshape contour points to have four lists with two places in a list. It represents our four corners with x and y coordinates. After that, we need to create a new empty numpy array, where we will store the contour corner point coordinates in the correct order. It has the same shape, but float type. We want to maintain the same corner points order as we used before. First is a top left corner, second, top right, third, bottom left, and fourth, bottom right. Top left and bottom right points we can get summing the x and y coordinates. The top left point will have the smallest sum and the bottom right point will have the largest sum. First, we sum x and y coordinates together by specifying an axis equal to 1. And after that, we use numpy's argument and argmax functions. Top right and bottom left points we can get by taking the difference between the x and y coordinates. The top right point will have the smallest difference and the bottom left point will have the largest difference. We have all corner points. Now we need to calculate the dimensions of our new image. We will calculate the distance between points coordinates. First, let's unpack our corner points. Next, 
We calculate the bottom width of the image by computing the distance between the x-coordinates of the bottom right and bottom left points. For top width, we calculate the distance between the x-coordinates of the top right and top left points. Similarly, we calculate right height and left height. What's left is to define the output image size. Due to perspective, we don't know the exact dimension, so we will use the maximum width and height. For that, we will use the max function and convert our inputs to integers. In this example, we can clearly see that we have an A4 size paper. We could use the A4 paper dimensions, but for this example, I will just keep the same aspect ratio. What's left is the perspective transformation. Let's uncomment our desired points. Corner points are in the same order as we calculated, we just need to update width and height names to a max width and max height. And for the perspective transformation, we uncomment the matrix and image output. Here also we need to update width and height names to a max width and max height and image to image original because we want to warp the original image. Finally, we add another imshow method to show the warped image. Let's name window warped perspective and define the output image. We can run the code. We can see a contour detection window with all process steps and a warped perspective window with the result. Hope you like this video. If you have any questions leave them in the comment section. You will find the code in the video description. If you like this video, please leave a like and hit the subscribe button for more Python videos.